we knew that this movie was gonna be something different. Uniquely brutal. It felt like coming home. We share a certain history. Her story in this case. People are dying to find out. I hear you're a horror fan. Hayden, if I could start with you, I um, love Kirby so much. Scream 4 was the first Scream movie I got, I was old enough to see in theaters, and I immediately connected with her and never believed she was dead. Uh, so what has it been like for you to kind of see fans campaigning and hoping for your survival and see like amazing. the Kirby hive rise? <laughs> Amazing, amazing, so inspirational, so, so, I, I needed it so badly. Um, and they came to my rescue, honestly. Um, and uh, for them, I, I went knocking and I was like, please bring me back because cause there's more to be done. There's more to be done. It was such a joy. I was like the, in my cheering in my uh, movie theater when we saw you pop up for the first time. It's a great, I love it's it. a great entrance for any character. But in the case of a returning Scream Four into Scream Six, uh, you know it's super satisfying for the fans. It was so much fun. I know that the fans are going to be very pleased. I saw all of that online. Twitter exploded, and um, I do not believe that the fans will be disappointed. It was really fun. It really was like a meeting of um, the minds. Thank you to our brilliant writers. And Hayden brought it, and I think I brought it, and uh, the rest is history. I mean, Her story in this case. It's been said. It was, it, it felt like coming home, Oof. honestly. It, it, it felt like coming home. Um, I found myself in Kirby in Scream 4, and we are very similar, very alike, and um, when she came back, I wanted to bring that back and make sure that the same Kirby survived and is that same lion, lioness that she has always been. This isn't like any other ghost face. It's for you. I didn't realize until it was the Gale's big scene that like Gale had not had a ghost face call scene. I don't know why that didn't occur to me. Can you speak to making that happen with Courtney and having this like exciting, huge moment for the franchise? Yeah, I mean, it's just something that we had always wanted to see. Jamie and Guy had always wanted to see. Fans have always wanted to see. Courtney wanted to do it. Like Courtney was so excited about it. Like shooting that whole sequence was so much fun. And Roger Jackson called in and he was on the phone with her, which was the first time they've really had it, like Gail and Ghostface. Like it was it was just exciting. And you know, I, Courtney had had so much fun on this one and talking to him and that whole chase and like the stunt rehearsals were so much fun. Like watching Courtney yes, just like, like get into it. Get into it. That was awesome. It was really awesome. And also yeah. to say Courtney's stunt double, incredible and looked exactly like her. Yeah, crazy. This is long overdue was just wondering if there were any uh, like legacy characters that are on your bucket list that you would like to see pop up in a future installment. I was hoping Heather Matarazzo was gonna be in this movie again. I was, I was so too, psyched. we love her. <laughs> she, I, I, Mama. any excuse to see mom on set. I hope she, she shows up. Heather Matarazzo, that's, you know what? Solidified. That's <sighs> the answer. Bring, bring, bring her back. Get her kicking Ghostface's yeah. ass. Put her in a full fist fight with Ghostface oh, yeah. in the next one. Roundhouse kicks and all, please. Yep. She would kill her. Yeah, that was my, I hoped, I wanted her to be the cold open <laughs> this yeah. time. That was like my theory in my brain. That would've been <laughs> sick. Go. I mean, we brought, we brought Billy back as a hallucination, so anything's possible. I mean, there's a, there's a, there's a, an Easter egg in this one that, to our knowledge, well, maybe nobody said anything to us yet, but there is an Easter egg of a character we would like to bring back. You guys, you got me with that last time with the curvy Easter egg and I had to go back and find it. I love it. You want me. So let's finish this. You know, I felt like the violence and the kills in this movie were especially emotional and character driven. Did that feel, did you feel that shift in this project? Yes, yes, we did. Um, while we were shooting the movie, we would all look at each other and like, after they'd yell cut, I'm talking like, I remember specifically a moment when we were shooting the ladder sequence mm. and it was Jasmine, Josh, Devin and I, and we were, every time that they, will, that they would yell cut, 
we'd be like, you know how when you cry with like a lot of emotion with like with your whole body, you get like shivers and you get like, like sighing and stuff like that. And we'd all be like that after each take. And we knew like from that moment, we knew that this movie was going to be something different on another level. Right. Well, it was it was nice to um, have a movie under my belt to experience what it's like to shoot with uh, a ghost face, but there's something um, I think uniquely brutal about uh, Scream 6's ghost face because every time I felt myself like run a little faster, <laughs> like I, I was like, I just kind of, which is hilarious because the stunt technicians that operate the ghost face costume and do the, a lot of the stunts are all nice guys every time. Yeah, they're not scary at all. But the second they don that and start doing the like ghost face, like something happens. Mannerisms, it becomes like terrifying in a weird way. The rules are very clear. Don't go to the other room and make out. Don't get in the car, right? I mean, each film reminds you exactly this stuff so that you can survive it. We do not disappoint in Scream 6, but I'm literally telling you, like Scream itself, where it feeds yeah. back on itself, that's all I had to do, was mm -hmm. to listen to what Scream movies were telling me to do in Scream 6. So the mystery has been wonderful. People are dying to find out. Um, but uh, so, so is Detective Bailey, who's uh, out there trying to track down this killer. There is a certain tone to Scream, and this movies, these movies are funny. But I think the fact that they grounded, like Jamie and Guy are brilliant writers, grounded it in family and in like the family dynamic. And it just gives it a lot more gravity, I feel like. It just feels very intense in a way. Yeah, and, I and thought that really paid off, um, yeah, like from I, an I'm audience glad. perspective. I'm glad to hear that because we definitely, it does feel like they took they took this movie and stretched it out in both directions, in like the more serious direction and like the more heart-wrenching direction, and also in like the more brutal, funnier, bigger, louder direction. <laughs> and I think it's it's such a delicate balance, but Matt and Tyler did a beautiful job. It followed me here, and it's gonna keep coming for us. What I really love about these last two movies is how much the story is really about family and about your relationship with your sister. Can you speak about um, your continued collaboration with Jenna Ortega and kind of fleshing out these two women? I mean, it's so funny because from the moment we met, it just felt so easy and it felt so natural and and it like we met on Zoom for the first time and it was just there. And I think that's why Matt and Tyler were like, these are the girls because it just felt like we had known each other for forever. And I am a very protective older sister. I have three younger sisters myself in real life. So the idea of this older sister doing anything and going above and beyond to protect her, her younger sister was something that felt very natural to me. and. I love that you get to spend so much time with them in this next movie and you get to see more colors to their relationship because in the fifth one, it's it's pretty much like the younger sister's getting attacked and yeah. the older <laughs> sister is trying to protect her and like that's it. And in this one, you get to see the frustration that comes with like spending so much time together. That's more, that's so common of a sibling relationship when you're living together. And so you get to see friction and you get to see laughter and you get to see now the younger sister being protective of the older one. And so it, I think it, it's just a beautiful thing to get to play out with someone that I love as much as Jenna. Ready, I'm ready. Come on, mother! I really loved how throughout the movie, you all referenced so many fan theories, either like with a passing line or by making it like an actual part of the plot. Uh, can you speak to why this was important besides like giving us more like red herrings possibly? Yeah, I think that um, one of the things that really excited us about this movie is and it was and it was very much on the page and I think but I think we're we're still sort of surprised at how um, at how well the meta conversation is actually baked into the plot of this that you know there aren't a lot of kind of side side quest conversations where they're just referencing things that it feels like, the legacy of these movies, the fan theories, all of that is like very much 
plot specific, right? It has a reason to exist in the movie outside of just a fun way for the movie to wink and nod at the audience. And that I, that to us is um, is one of the really fun kind of twists on the genre that's that we're that we're playing with in this movie. Well, there were so many moments where like I thought I caught something and then you guys got me. You know, it really keeps the audience on their toes in such a fun way. Look, um, I would say too. I think one of the things that we love about this fandom is that there's a standard that we that we have to hold ourselves to because of how detail oriented um, and smart the, the the viewership is. Like that to us. That's an amazing thing to have to achieve at a certain level because you're going to hold us accountable in a really in a really honest way, and that's that's really fun to create under that. It's so funny this with the release. I talked to you in the last Junkie for the last movie about uh, Yellow Jackets and being so excited for it. And once again, these two things are coming back at the same time. Great timing for this, me. That's right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Is, it, is there a connection at all? Is it just all coincidence? Like, what do you think that, what is the experience on your end, the fact that they keep dropping together? It's bizarre. I, I think it's, well, I don't know, because they're both Paramount. So maybe someone up there has my back, oh. but um, I think that it's God. I think that it's um, really just great timing. But I will say it is odd that the yellow time, the, the yellow times, the, yellow. what the heck? The yeah. Yellow Jackets Showtime jacket looks like Chad's jacket yeah, from the screen. I noticed that. That is people weird. People kept tagging me in photos and I was like, yeah, she looks great. Leave me alone. Um, <laughs> I'm not bitter. A lot of I'm weird synergy. Yellow yeah, jacket. interesting, right? Um, that's the best show. I love it so much. Thank and you. I love Jasmine. The best. <laughs> you and me both, man. But thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you so Congratulations, much. you guys. Thanks. Take care. Thank you.